you know, doing a season of Advent, I don't know if I'll have an actual, uh, you know, theme or cycle. Just, just might preach, you know, whatever, whatever moves me. Uh, so sometimes it might be on the first reading, sometimes on the gospel, but in this case, it might kind of be on both. Uh, we're going to hear a lot of the prophet Isaiah. We do a lot during the seasons of Advent and the seasons of Lent. Um, a very, very important book. Uh, I think maybe besides the Psalms, probably one of the most quoted books in the, in the New Testament, um, in the prophet Isaiah. And this, in this case, it, it's in chapter 26. And so that's important to know to where we're at in Isaiah when we hear it, because the book is divided really into two major parts, chapters 1 to 39 and then 40 to 55. Uh, so 1 to 39, um, the time frame seems to be the Assyrians conquered the northern kingdom. Isaiah is in the southern kingdom, kind of given warning and preparations to say, hey, you know, this, this could be us too. You know, what happened to our brothers up north? The Assyrians could easily move their way down. Now, they listened to Isaiah, okay, and the Assyrians don't come down. But eventually, they, the Babylonians will, about maybe 150 years later. Chapters 40 to 55, now the time frame of that is after the Babylonian exile. Okay, So all the bad things that Isaiah was worrying about in the first 39 chapters seem to happen, and now God's offering consolation. Now, you might say, well, how did Isaiah live all through that? Well, it's debatable whether he wrote the whole book or not. Uh, we, we don't know. Most likely it was him and then maybe one of his uh, students or something kind of followed up after that. But in today's first reading, you have what here? You have a ver- some very important words here. Um, a strong city have we. He sets up walls and ramparts to protect us. So you get this idea that Isaiah that the word of the Lord is going to be their protection. Again, this is Isaiah warning the people to amend their ways, and then the Assyrians won't come down. Okay, and so now he's given a prophecy of of how, again, trusting in the Lord, as we said in the second part of this first reading here, trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is the eternal rock. To place their trust in the word, no matter how, again, out of the ordinary may seem, you know, because in life we have kind of like this battle of how we think things should turn out and how God sees and how things will turn out according to God's eyes. And often those two things are at odds, you know. So go back to Genesis, go back to our Bible study. You know, Abraham and Sarah were promised a child, a son. It took a while. Abraham first believed, but then doubt started coming in. And what happened? Abraham took matters into his own hands. Right? Him and Sarah decided to, to take their maidservant and have a child with her, Ishmael, thinking, okay, this is how God's going to provide a son. No, Abraham, that's how you see things, not how God sees them. Trust in him. You know, same thing in the gospel reading. The foundation is placing our trust in the words of God. In the words, really, literally, let the advent of God's word come into our heart and let it rest and let that be the foundation of our lives. Living, breathing and moving according to God's word, his law and his direction. That will be a rock, a solid foundation that will keep you going through the goods and the lows of life. You know, and right now in this age where we live at now, depending on where we live in the world, but even here in America, Sometimes we might get disappointed and discouraged and, and we see kind of just the, the faith of people, the morality of people around us fall apart. We see our country moving in a very uh, immoral direction and, and we say, okay, God, where are you in all this? Okay, we're in the Advent season. We're watching, we're preparing, but we're more importantly, we're trusting in his word and in his direction. May God bless you.